I've got 80 facets to cut on this, the largest morganite I've ever cut. For that matter, it's the largest morganite I've ever seen. I'm Steve Moriarty from morejams.com, so join me while I finish the crown of this museum quality morganite. So this is our design, and here is a picture of the crown. And we're gonna start 55 degrees, and we're gonna be on the indexes for 28, 36, 60, 68, and 92. And that'll cut this first row around the girdle. So we're gonna cut this first facet at 55 degrees, and I'm gonna be using this 360 lap. So I'm gonna to wanna to cut up a little bit short of where I need to be so when I get the finer laps, I, I don't cut my girdle too thin. So I'm gonna be cutting this down somewhere into this range. I don't know. I'll, I'll try and get it similar to what's left here is what I'll be cutting the girdle down to. And then we'll go to a less coarse grit and, and it'll take it a little bit further and then we'll uh, probably be doing two grits. We'll be doing, uh, well, well, I'll have the 360, I'll go to the 1200, then um, the 600 lightning lap. And then this time I'm going to do the 1200 lightning lap. Hopefully we'll shorten my polishing period. So we want to end at 55 degrees. So we're going to be starting deeper. You know, it's... And I'll just keep adjusting the mass height so that I end up at 55 degrees. So I'll also be checking to make sure that this facet I'm creating at the girdle is completely square and if not I'll do some cheating because particularly during the transfer um, you can often uh, not be exactly square once you get transferred to the ground. So I've kind of roughly preformed in the girdle and maybe you can see it, but I'm, I'm cutting a little deeper on the left side. So it's kind of going uphill. So I've cheated a little bit to the right and uh, we'll try and cut that again and see if I've straightened up the girdle line. So here's our cheater and I need to cut more to the right. So we're going to rotate this to the right and we'll give that a try and see if that straightens it out. So now that I've got quite a bit of that crown cut away, uh, I'm going to switch to, uh, I've got a brand new 1200. We'll see if it's quick enough cutting to do what we want.
So on this center facet, you can see to the right is where I've started cutting. So that's what our cheat to the right did for us. So the first row is cut. Uh, we're down to 1200. I'll go to the, um, well, I'll cut the rest of the facets and then we'll go back to uh, the 600 lightning lap. I still need to cheat a little bit left. We're still going downhill right a little bit. I'm getting a little short on girdle, but I think we're going to be good. So I want to go next and, and get this table, make sure it's flat, get that glue off there. And to do that, I, I've got a new 600 lap here that I'm going to use to do this. I set, uh, I always set on 96, so I, I know what I cut the, the table at. I'm always 96, so I know to go there to polish also. So uh, I've raised the mast, and hopefully, hopefully there's enough mast to raise. So normally, uh, the machine recommends using the table adapter to do tables. I've never done that. I've always just set it straight up and down. We may have to polish with the table adapter. We'll see how it comes out. A big fast uh, table facet like this could be a problem doing like this, but I'm going to preform it as I would uh, all my tables. I, I just cut uh, vertical on zero. Instead of a table adapter, you'd be on 45 degrees. So on this machine, you really need to be above zero. I set it to one because once you get below zero, it always reads zero. So you don't know where you're at. So if you have it on one, you know you're very close to zero, but not below zero. Just a issue with, with how the indicator reads. I just slowly lower it. I can kind of look through the side of the stone. I can see when I'm actually cutting the table and not still cutting glue. Let's take a look. So we're still just cutting glue. And you do want to make sure this is good and tight, otherwise it's going to move on you. So we've probably cut enough of the table. At least I know it's smooth here where I'm going to end up with a table. Most of the glue is off. So we'll get back to cutting the, the next row of facets. So, so now that I've got the table kind of where I want it, uh, I'm going to go back and do that first row of facets with the 600 lightning lap and just cheat it a little more left and get, get that correct before we go on and, and cut the rest of the facets.
So I've got the girdle adjusted and we've cut that down to the uh, 600 lightning lap um, so that one will be a little bit of ahead of the rest of the facets we're going to do now because I'm going to go back to the 1200 steel lap and cut the rest of the facets for this crown. And we're going to change the angle to 50 degrees for this second row. See where we're cutting. This has got to come down to the girdle. So we'll keep cutting, keep adjusting the mast height. Try and end up at 50 degrees at the girdle. So and, and that I'm coming coming up a little short because we've cut a step further on this bottom facet. So I want to leave a little room to um, cut the next row and not overcut at the girdle here. So these two are cut, uh, we'll cut another one here and here, but these I'm going to go around and match these um, on the other sides, then we'll move on to the, the next row. So we've got the first two rows done, the first rows cut on the 600 lightning lap, second rows on the 1200 steel lap. So I'm just about done with the second row. We've got six rows on this crown of this Morganite. So a little bit yet to go, and uh, once I get all these rows cut, we'll get back to you. So I've got all the crown facets cut. A few errors along the way, but I'm sure with the, uh, the 600 lightning lap, um, it'll probably 
fix those errors so hopefully that happens I've got to cut the table to size now it's uh, still too big and after that we'll get on to the 600 lightning lap and and get these facets a little brighter and see if I need to go on to the 1200 lightning lap So while I've got this set exactly where I cut it, I'm going to repolish the table, or not polish, I'm going to recut the table. So the table is pre-polished uh, all the way down to the 1200 lightning lap and uh, now it's time to go on to the crown facets.
All right, finally, those 80 facets are finished and time to move on to polish, maybe. You know, this is the 600. You know, I'm hoping the facets are small enough that I can polish from the 600 lightning lap. Otherwise, I'll have to go over it one more time. So we'll give uh, a, a test polish on one of the facets and if it just takes me a minute or so, I'll be good and we'll go ahead with polishing. So I'm going to skip the uh, 1200 lightning lap. Um, it's polishing quite well from the 600. And I think the difference between the crown and the pavilion are a couple of things. You know, I didn't cut with the 360 at all on the crown. Um, maybe just the start, but all the faceting was done uh, with the 1200 and the same 1200. But the 1200 on the pavilion was a brand new 1200, so it cut a lot coarser. And uh, over the facets on the pavilion, uh, it kind of broke in that 1200, so it cut smoother. And then on the 600 lightning lap, I took a little extra time and polished a little further. So I think that made the difference. So now I can polish direct from the 600 lightning lap. So I'm polishing with the bat lap and using 50,000 diamond grit or diamond powder. So I'll continue my way around uh, these 80 facets, uh, polishing with the 50,000 diamond powder, and I'll show you when I'm finished. Well, eight hours later, and I finally polished the crown. I still have this monster table to go. Uh, we'll see if we get that to that tonight. Um, I did end up going to the 1200 lightning lap to do a pre-polish. You know, and, and I have a lot of issues with pre-polish as far as it, it makes it very difficult to see what's polished and what the next facet that you need to polish is because they're both almost polished and it's just difficult to see the facets um, and after eight hours of cutting and ten hours on the job um, it gets difficult to see the facets period so um, I'm pretty sure I, I got it really well polished it's looking great um, look forward to getting it off the dop I'm even getting happier with the color of it. It just looks to be a beautiful peach colored morganite. It's the size I wanted and so tomorrow we'll see uh, the unveiling uh, of this uh, hopefully 300 carat morganite, at least 250. So it's uh, been a, a monumental job to say the least and I'm not done yet. So we'll uh, see you tomorrow and uh, we we'll, should have this all finished up and ready for viewing. So this is the way I normally would cut a table uh, on zero. You know, the, they do supply you with a um, 45 degree adapter, which we may have to go to because this is such a big table. This, this may not work for us, but I'm going to give it a try. If it does, great. If it not, uh, we'll go to the 45 adapter.
a compulsion high. The vertical zero degree attempt to polish uh, the table didn't work. It just, as you can see, it was cutting to one side. On a small table, you can keep cutting and it'll go all the way across, but on a table this size, a stone this hard, you'd be forever trying to get that to work. So we went to the standard supplied 45 degree um, adapter, and we'll give polishing this big table another shot. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to run it across here and see where we're at. So we're high and to the right. So we'll cheat left. And lower the mast. Getting closer, a little bit further right, a little bit lower. So we're using this marker just to mark it and see, help me see if I'm close to being uh, flat to the top. It looks down the center, we'll see. Maybe a little right. Well, let's give it a try. Um, try lowering it just a little. So while you're doing this, you always hold the stone, you don't hold the machine, um, keep a grip on the stone so you don't put any pressure on the dop. Looks like I could still cheat a little bit to the left. 
and keep recharging this. So be careful you don't pick your stone up into the center nut here. That'd be a disaster. Apply a lot of pressure. Kind of see, I need to go back right. It's getting better. So it's all finished, got uh, done polishing that huge table, which took probably an hour, um, which is not bad. And it worked out real well. You know, very happy with the stone. All that's left is to find out uh, what it weighs, how brilliant it is, and what the actual color is. And then we'll come up with a, a determination of what we think the value is. So this is my jar of attack that will um, soften up the epoxy and hopefully by tomorrow we'll be able to get it off uh, off this dop. Uh, hopefully my jar is big enough. I've never had that issue before. No, oh, it's close. I think it's in there. So overnight I would expect that to free up and We'll see what we get. You know, it's been a long, hard journey getting this stone cut. I'm worn out, uh, but it'll be exciting tomorrow to see what it looks like. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and join us for our next uh, episode, which is going to be uh, unveiling this marvelous Morganite.